Montreal, Quebec, home to many a bakery. But none quite like La Pont de Laval, which Chief's offensive lineman, Lahant Duvernay Tardif, can call home. The bakery's name translates to bread in the sales, a tribute to one of the many life experiences that makes the Montreal native unique, as far as professional football players go. As a child, Lahant and his family embarked on a year long sailing trip that spanned the Caribbean. When they got back, his parents opened this bakery. That's the result of all the pastry we're doing. And, and then we have also have like a, a lunch menu where we do like sandwiches and stuff like that. But, I mean, this is the bread and butter of what we do. Well, literally the bread and butter of what we do. The combination of two passions is intrinsic for Lahan, who while starting on the offensive line for the Chiefs, is also pursuing his medical degree at the prestigious McGill University. Right now, like, I'm doing my fourth year, which is my last year of medical school. I break down into three years, uh, four months at a time. Right now, I'm doing the, the second part of that, that fourth year. Right now, I'm doing emergency, which is kind of great because it's shift work. Um, I have 16 shifts over the month. I'm doing night shift, evening shift, day shift, and I'm able to, to train. So, you know, before that, right after the season, I was doing internal medicine. You never know when you're gonna get out of a medical floor. So sometimes you're doing like 16 hour shift, sometimes 14, 12. Uh, so it was kind of hard to, to train at that time. But I put, I put that rotation at the beginning of the off season, especially because we don't have to train as much uh, right after the season. And now that I'm in emergency, I'm able to, to train. So at the end of the day, I'm still, I'm still studying med school and I'm still playing football and I'm gonna graduate next year. So uh, when there's a problem, there's also an answer. Canada has a rich history in the realm of sports, namely in terms of its hockey. But it was the pigskin that appealed to a young Lahan, despite the fact that football success stories are few and far between north of the border. Did you have original plans to play beyond high school? No, 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 no. Well, what changed? I, I was just loving the game, and everybody was telling me, you know what, Lahan, if you wanna, if you wanna get into med school, you, you, you have to make a choice. You, you cannot do both at the same time because they're both really demanding. And I was refusing to, to accept that because they were both like passion for me. And uh, I, I got uh, drafted in medicine at, at McGill University, which is a, a big school, a good school. But at the time I was not speaking a single word of English. So that was a big problem for me because uh, McGill is an English school. And uh, the first two weeks of the season, I, I decided to focus only on school. So the first two weeks you quit the, you quit yeah. the McGill football team. Yeah. Can you talk about that situation where you went back to the coach and got him to accept you back onto the team? Well, when you're a football player and you, you, you're not on the field on, on, on Saturday, it's, uh, it's hard. And uh, after two weeks, I, I, was, I was just not able to deal with that. And I, I went to see the coach uh, Monday after the game. I told him, like, I, I was a little scared because I was not speaking English because of med school and everything. And he kind of understood. I, I had a, a rough first year, but uh, after that, things uh, got along. And, that's one of the things I'm really proud about, is to, uh, to refuse to say no and to, to push always forward uh, in order to practice your true passion at the same time. Lahant was determined to do precisely what he had been told was impossible. With McGill coaches, Lahant altered his schedule when necessary, allowing for the pursuit of his two dreams simultaneously. My first two years with the, the team, I was going to almost every practice. I was maybe missing one for exam and stuff like that. But when I got to my third year of medical school, that's when you start to like doing rotation in hospital. It happened multiple times that I was like finishing my rotation in medicine. I was going to sleep in the locker room for a couple hours and I was there the next day for the morning practice. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of sacrifice, but at the same time, when you, when you like what you're doing, you, you, don't, you don't count the hour, you just do it. Sometimes it's desire that trumps all else. And for Lahant, that certainly was the case. But still, being that Lahant was attempting to do something that few of his peers could relate to, it was important that he not do it alone. Dr. J. Scott Delaney is the Research Director of Emergency Medicine at McGill University, has been one of Lahant's biggest supporters along the way. What did it mean for you to take on that mentorship role in that pursuit? Well, I think, you know, obviously to do what he has done He's very smart and very self-motivated, so you're not taking a piece of raw clay and molding it. You know, it's sort of a ship that's going somewhere, and you may say, just go a little bit more right there. I would always say to people, you know, he's a smart guy. I said, as smart as you think he is, he's smarter. 
it'd be much easier just to clear your schedule and say, this is what I'm gonna do for the next 12 months. To be able to continue to do that, to make progress, to wanna learn, to do the on-call, shows um, how dedicated and the passion he has. Dedication is a word that would appear to mean more to Lahant than most. As time went on at McGill, his dedication to the medical field was quite apparent behind the scenes. But out in the open, in front of cameras and between the white lines, Lahant showed true talent, the capability of playing at the next level. And the buzz that came from that continued to build as the draft process began. Was that scary, knowing the fact that you wanted to complete medical school? A little bit, uh, but I really, like, my first three years at McGill was more uh, playing for fun. Around my fourth year, that's when I started to have, like, more interest uh, from CFL team at the beginning, and then I started to have some interest on the, on the south side of the border, and that, uh, that's, that's when I realized that I was going to have a, a, a shot, maybe. I host the first pro day in Montreal uh, ever to happen. Now, Laurent Duvernay Tardif is one of the most highly sought after draft picks in professional football. Now, last week, Tardif was the center of attention as scouts from both sides of the border put him through the paces here in Montreal. So, to, to host that pro day was kind of uh, my only chance to put both like CFL scout and NFL scout in the same place, same time, and for me to perform my test. And when I, when I saw that 10 teams show up, that, that gave me a lot of confidence throughout the process. Hello? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? Cheap. Your maple, uh, maple leaf uh, tackle in the sixth round. He's a doctor from McGill Medical School. Yeah. DuVernay's got the most unique skill set of all of them. You have a chance to hit the ceiling on a player if he's got unique skill set. His dream was playing National Football League. He's playing in the National Football League now. So you right now have two jobs. You know, you're on the football field in one part of your life and then you're in the hospital the other part. I want to know more about the hospital. What's the most difficult part about your current role right now in the off season? I, I think that the most difficult thing for me is uh, to come back to being a medical student. You know, you go from really, really high emotion state and then the week after you're waking up at 6 in the morning, you're on the floor at 6.45, uh, you have a certain number of patients under your care. And I feel like it's like playing football in the sense that it's algorithm. You know what, what are your responsibility, but you don't know what the defense is going to do. The same way you don't know how a patient is going to respond to certain things. It's not the same thing for sure, but I think there's some similarity. Plus the, the teamwork, I mean, people don't realize, but in hospital you, you work with nurse, with uh, PAB, with physiotherapist, occupational therapist. Uh, I, think, I think that d dimension is really similar to football in the sense that uh, you cannot try to be a hero. You need to really work as a team and communicate well. In this world, we are called upon to make our mark. As we grow, we develop interests and skills and somewhere along the way, our dreams become unmistakable. Some dream of playing under the bright lights of a Super Bowl. Others dream to help their fellow man. Lahad Duvernay Tardif was born with both of these dreams. And through his persistence and his ability to overcome barriers, he has and continues to follow the paths he has chosen. You know, to have the opportunity to play pro sports at the highest level, which is the NFL, is something an incredibly small percentage of people get to do. It's a little fraternity and club that he'll always have. But, you know, the NFL stories will fade a bit and what have you, and they'll be like, well, you know Dr. Duvernay Tardif played in the NFL. And they just won't know him as that. They'll just know him as a really good doctor. They'll be more impressed with the person and the physician they're dealing with.